the new Panamera has already proven itself as an impressive machine that balances of comfort, pace and sometimes physics-defying handling abilities. So why does the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo exist? After long ago proven it can make hot cars that aren't two-seat sports cars, does Porsche need a reason to add another $100,000 this wagon to its lineup? Two reasons spring to mind. First, well, why not make the standard Panamera a little more practical? Second, according to Porsche the 2012 concept of the same name received an especially positive reception. But back then, the wagon's rear end of the concept fixed the Panama's most controversial styling feature, its bulbous trunk-like hatch. The Sport Turismo name itself is Porsche's way of saying this Panama is not the most practical wagon, much like how it shies away from calling the Panama sedan the hatchback that it is. With 49 cubic feet of space once the rear seats are folded, there's just a bit more space than in the standard Panamera, and slightly less than in the Macan SUV dash itself not exactly known for its slowed lugging abilities. This is no Mercedes or Volvo wagon, but the Porsche is certainly spacious inside, seats up or down. It's the only Panamera that gets a fifth seat belt. Too, although the seat back belt is associated with is so minimalist that Porsche calls the Sport Turismo a 4 plus 1. It's so cramped that the optional 4 seat configuration with the center console, like that on the standard Panamera, is likely to be a popular option. Two adults will be comfortable back there, especially those taller than 6 feet, thanks to the Sport Turismo's higher roofline. Only one wheelbase is offered, unlike the sedan's longer executive variant that offers more generous rear groom. While Porsche says the Sport Turismo differs from Panamera sedan from the B pillars back, everything else is nearly untouched. Walk up, open the driver's door and sit inside, and you'd be hard pressed to find any differences. The new Panamera's low seating position, fingerprint magnet of a center console, and fantastic driving position are all here in this slightly more practical variant. In the United States, the Panama Sport Turismo comes only in four all-wheel drive forms this year. The Panama 4 with a 3.0-liter turbo V6 and 330 horsepower serves as a way to keep the base price below $100,000, while the 4S gets a substantial boost from a 440-horse 2.9-liter turbo V6. The 4E Hybrid combines the 4S's turbo V6 and an electric motor for a combined 462 horsepower. And the almighty turbo, boasting 550 horsepower from a 4.0-liter turbo V8, is currently the top sport Turismo. On roads near Victoria, British Columbia, the Turbo Sport Turismo proved a predictably rapid vessel, just like the sedan we drove last year. The roughly $10,000 worth of Porsche dynamic chassis control and torque vectoring, sport chrono pack and rear axle steering had something to do with how well the Panama behaves when pushed, sure. But even in its most comfortable and relaxed mode, its sharp responses do a remarkable job of making you forget you're behind the wheel of more than two tons of wagon. Finally, the AMG line of fast wagons has something to fear. We also broke away for a brief drive in the not for US 4S Sport Tourist mode powered by the 4.0-liter turbo V8 diesel. Its 416 horsepower is impressive enough, but the predictably monstrous 627 pound feet toward figure is 59 better than even the turbo. In the Panama, and perhaps especially the Sport Tourist mode, it highlights the car's grand touring abilities. But do we really need to tell you why the 4S diesel isn't coming to the U.S.? Porsche Cars North America and the Environmental Protection Agency, for that matter, would rather point you to the e-hybrid for the more than fuel economy needs. That e-hybrid, though, makes an excellent case for itself. Using the 4S's powerful 2.9 liter the turbo V6, and made it to an electric motor, it's plenty fast and electric-only mode. Put it in Sport Plus mode, and not only do you get more urgent responses from the steering and accelerator pedal, but braking and coasting also charms the battery up, to the 
point where you can comfortably switch back into eat mode for the homeowner's association issues and noise complaint. While it may not have the V8 soundtrack for high five speed of the turbo, the Eat Hybrid is perfectly satisfying and fifty thousand dollars less. Of course, it's easy to spend about fifty thousand dollars by running down the infamously long Porsche options just to fuel traffic to things like the one thousand eight hundred fifty dollars truffle brown leather covering the one thousand five hundred fifty dollars eighteen by sport seats in our test car. The ninety-six thousand two hundred dollars and the four sport pool smoke isn't slow, but three hundred thirty horsepower is what Mercedes-Benz offers in a sixty-three thousand dollars V four hundred wagon. So the urge to jump to the one hundred nine thousand two hundred dollars for us is justified. Seriously consider the one hundred four thousand dollars for E hybrid, however, for its improved the work and economy. The Almighty Turbo starts at $154,000 and, even then, you still have to tick some boxes to get the Sport Chrono Package, $2,530, rear axle steering, $1,620, and dynamic chassis control, $5,000, all options that should take importance over items like the $5,940 Burmester Audio System or even $280 heated steering wheel. Some may sneer at the prospect of spending well into six figures for a wagon, or even at the fact Porsche has built a wagon at all, or that one of the company's SUVs is actually the far more practical proposition if people and things are priority number one. But 30 years from now, it's a safe bet the sport tourism will be looked at more fondly than a Cayenne or Nikon of a similar vintage.